The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day after the market close. Tom takes your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time. Let's go to Glenn in Massachusetts. Hey, Glenn, what's going on? You know what is good for us is Tom O'Brien providing an unbiased source of information for us investors. You don't have an agenda. It's just to cut through everything and to give us the facts. I want to thank you. No, I appreciate it, man. And now, here's Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. Well, five days a week, we go two hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone had a great day, safe day. It's a TGIF Friday, folks, kicking off the summer. Let's make it a great one. And, of course, uh, it's a Memorial Day weekend. And let's not forget about uh, all the men and women, uh, not only that are out there right now uh, uh, in the armed forces, but in the past. Um, you know, bottom line is uh, send a lot of great white light out there, a lot of prayers out there. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Surrender and let go of the past. Whatever life takes away from you, let it go. When you surrender and let go of the past, you allow yourself to be fully in the moment. Letting go of the past means that you can enjoy the dream that is happening right now. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not here. What are you doing right now, folks? Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow up 38, NASDAQ up 13, S&P's up 3.5, gold contract up $13.30, trading at 1537 an ounce. Silver. Up sixty cents at thirty-seven dollars and ninety-three cents an ounce. Platinum up twenty-nine dollars at one thousand eight hundred an ounce. Copper up seven pennies at four eighteen a pound. Light sweet crude up thirty-eight cents at one hundred dollars and sixty-one cents a barrel. Bonds down five ticks at one twenty-five twenty-six. Dollar index down sixty-four ticks, trading out at seventy-four ninety-nine. Euro up fourteen ticks at one forty-two. Yen. Down 44 ticks, trading out at 80.85. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want well, to know what's going on in your world, in the world of the S&Ps. Let's take a look at them. What do you have? We come down off those highs May 2nd, 1370. First leg down gets you into this uh, 1312. We go up yesterday. Well, si yeah, you go up slightly yesterday. You're up uh, with 800 million shares. Today, you do 692. Now, 692 million shares, folks, you're going against the fifth, which is 1.1 billion. And does it make a difference? Yes, it makes a difference. And this is why. If you were a bull, what you wanted out here is that you actually wanted a sideways move or you wanted to pull back. When you go up on a holiday like today, which 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 is normal, by the way, too, folks. Memorial Day, July 4th, coming into it, market likes to go topside. Um, what I suspect you're going to have here, you'll go a little more topside on Tuesday morning. It'll still be a weak deal, and then you'll start making your way down into the 1311 price point, into the 1294 price point, into the 1280 price point. Because what you have now is that your A point on this is 1370. Your B point is down there at the 1311. So you get approximately, well, you get a 59.8 A to B structure. Uh, you come down with some volume. You're going up with dramatically lighter volume. And I suspect you'll see the same thing on Monday. We're going to take a look at the Dow Industrials. And we have with the Dow, same type of setup in the Dow. Uh, Dow is up 38 points. Not, not any juice here. Uh, we're at 12,441. I suspect you can... I'll probably get into about the 12,521 area. And where I'm going with that, folks, is that that is the low of May 5th. May 5th, when we had come down, that's when we had some juice on the way down. In fact, that was 1.1 billion on the way down. As you get up into that level, that's what's going to be tough to get into and over. Then as that composite, we take a look at the composite. What we have with the composite is this. Now, the, the composite... Because it had gapped away, that composite is filling a couple gaps. Composite also went up 13 points. You did 1.6 billion shares. You're going into the, the gap on the composite was 2803, 
We hit 2801.15. I suspect it'll still get into that uh, 2803. In fact, the, the composite can actually get it, get into about 2825. And where I'm going with that is I'm also going up to the... Um, I, actually, on that one there, I'm going up to the third. Uh, it still won't get it over the February 18th time frame. So it's still in the lower trading range. We go look at the NASDAQ composite, the NDX, I mean the, the, the NDX rather, uh, we have with the NDX. Now the NDX is showing that it's actually weaker than the composite. And so that's, of course, the NDX is the, the top 100 stocks in the NASDAQ. And the NDX is trading out at uh, 2336. Uh, the top of that range is 2400. So that's way below it. If we go look at the four Qs, the three Qs now, and we take a look at how those are set up. You can see it's pretty clear. Uh, the high, the first high in the, in the three Qs was February 16th. That was 59 bucks. We go from 50, $59 down to $53. You come, the first time we were up there, we did uh, 53 million. You came downtown and did 176 million. That 176 million folks in the three Qs, that's what wants to get tested. The high of that is 55, the low of that is 53. So what do we do? We go from the 53 area, we go back top side again. We test the highs. We do it with 48 million. We test it again with 38 million. Then we come off those highs with 73 million. You go up today with 26. You can see the correlation. The correlation is every time that you are stepping downtown, it's going up dramatically. Um, you go uptown and it just can't handle it. So what you do have is that we can actually go back, which is pretty wild here. You actually can go back five months and we're in the same place in the NDX 100, which is pretty wild when you think about it. But that's how it's set up. Now, gold contract. Let's go over and take a look at gold. We have a gold out here today. Uh, gold goes up $13.13. Uh, uh, gold is over the 11th, which was the 1527. That's saying that, uh, you know, game is on here. For the 1542. The 1542 is the lows of the 2nd of May. Um, doesn't have the juice, but, you know, bottom line, that's going to get up there and get tested. We went to 1539 out here today. We go take a look at the silver contract. What you have with silver, what silver has done is that, of course, the first leg down was uh, pretty intense. Uh, you were you 15 bucks down from uh, 4950 into the 32 area, actually more than 15. Uh, silver is having a tough time just even trying to make it up to this 39.47. I expect it, we are going to probably see the counter trend belts get up to that level. We'll see how it gets there. Now, dollar index, okay? So this is what's running, not only, well, this is running the markets, period. We go take a look at the dollar index. What we had with the dollar index today is this. Dollar index comes back price-wise. You have price destruction without volume. And this is what you always, well, this is what I like to see. Why? Because what you have, folks, is that when you get, especially on a holiday uh, deal here, you can push the baby around. There's only 26,000 contracts. You're trading out at 74.95, And what you have, you're going into 55,000 contracts with 26,000. You're going into 66,000 contracts. That is a retracement on dramatically lighter volume going into days of strength. You get that going, so now what you have is that we have an A point out here uh, of 72.86, and your B point is up there at 76.54. Uh, so you're dealing with a four-point A to B structure. Uh, when, we, when we got up to that 76.54 on the 23rd, that was breaking topside. That it also wanted to do an ABC up, and it didn't fulfill the whole ABC up. Um, in fact, there would, there would have been two more points up there. All is with what it actually did, pull back, now pull back on lighter volume. That's on the daily. We put this on a weekly, and what you have on the weekly is uh, the week of the 13th of May. We pushed up with 224,000 contracts. Um, you know, last week we did 156,000 contracts. You're coming into 212. So the bottom line, you're building some strength to get into higher price. We go take a look at the bonds. We have with bonds out here, folks, uh, USM1. The, the bond contract right now, we are at the 126, uh, 125.26. Uh, this little baby is not only uh, pushing, but we're 
pushing up there with, with some juice. Yesterday, it was big numbers, not only yesterday, the day before. Uh, yesterday, what we had, we had uh, 646,000 contracts. The day prior, you had 624,000. Uh, what we did today is that uh, we matched the highs of yesterday. It wouldn't back off. That's telling me that um, I suspect next week it will go sideways a little bit. But the bonds do want to push into higher price. And, of course, the bonds are pushing it to higher price. What that is saying is that um, the correlation is that money is going into what they perceive as safety. You know, we'll see if you're paying 125000 per $100 bond uh, if, in fact, that's going to be safe or not. We go over to and we take a look at the XLF. Uh, XLF, of course, is the financial sector. That was up 11 pennies out here today, and that's going absolutely nowhere. Uh, the XLF, we're at the uh, 1568 area. Uh, 1579 wants to get tested. This has been a nonstop all the way down from 1720. This, the XLF wants to get into this uh, 1436 area. We go to energy next, the XLE. You take a look at the XLE. XLE is also set up. Uh, it's been in this range, the XLE, going all the way back to January. The XLE came off the highs. We came off the highs with some uh, juice there. May 2nd, it's going up into those levels, and I suspect it's going to have a tough time uh, getting, into, getting into higher price. What we will see as we go through the summer is that on Fridays and on Mondays, uh, of course, it's going to be light, light trading, and, and, you know, and not in a huge way, but it will absolutely be light trading. It's Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays where the market can have a real shot to either go topside with conviction or go downtown with conviction. That's kind of how this will play out going right into Labor Day. Now, what does happen is that if there's an acceleration or a destruction that does take place in the middle of the summer, uh, then you'll get two, three, four days that it won't matter whether it's a Monday or a Friday. Um, as momentum gets going... Either way, you will see follow through. But that's about that's it's usual in the summer as long as there is fast faster movement taking place. So we'll see how that shakes out. I expect we're going to see it, but uh, as to what month uh, we're going to see it, well, uh, what the market does like to do is this: the second week of July and the third week of July is normally the highest volatile month when we space it out June, July, and August. You know, at the end of August, the way it works out, meaning uh, August 15th, about the 10th to actually about the 20, 25th. That is about the deadest time there is in the marketplace. Most of the movement has taken place before that, and then after that, that's when you see some movement. Many times, it actually starts before Labor Day. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We had the Dow up 38, NASDAQ up 13, S&P's up 5.